Well, very sadly, the weekend has come to a close. It's a Sunday night. The only positive, I think, about a Sunday is the fact that you and I can just sit back and enjoy another episode of The Saint. This is an episode called The Music Murder, and I have no doubt... I've not listened to it myself. I generally listen to it kind of the same time as you. So uh, I can just sort of get into the mood and we can we could just listen to it together, which is nice, isn't it? Now, welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home, beautiful Lime Bay. Huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Right. Listen, this is important. I've got a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a YouTube channel, and they're all called Brett's All Time Radio Show. And if you could follow me, I would really appreciate it. Feel free to send any feedback on our shows if you get a minute or two, brett at touradate.co.uk, and we've got our supporter page, and uh, you'll find that at patreon.com forward slash Brett's All Time Radio Show. Time now for our latest episode of The Saint. As I said, this is called The Music Murder. The Adventures of... The Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures, the Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor, Vincent Price, as... The Saint. A proof that the language of music is a truly universal one, Mr. Templer, is in the people gathered here. They run the gamut from saints to sinners. Would you not agree? I would indeed, Mr. Opto. Uh, won't you join me? Oh, what? I accept with pleasure. Uh, fine. Uh, then you know me, Mr. Templer. Well, if you promise to keep the deep, dark secret, I'll confess that I have bought tickets to Carnegie Hall from time to time. <laughs> Piano concerts mostly, and those performed by Laurette Opto primarily. <laughs> that is a pleasing compliment, Mr. Templer. Well, it's understandable how I'd recognize a famous concert pianist like Laurette Opto. Thank you. But the, uh, the reverse is rather puzzling. And then it, uh, if you will keep the deep, dark secret, <laughs> I shall confess. You were pointed out to me by a newspaper reporter seated at my table. Which explains half the compliment. But uh, why did you come to my table? Why did you come here to this nightclub called the Bird Cage, Mr. Templer? Well, I could say because it reminds one of the black hole of Calcutta, but <laughs> the real reason was to hear the piano music of Johnny Crawford. Yes, precisely, as did I. Hmm? A Dixieland hepcat receiving recognition from a Carnegie Hall maestro? Uh, Johnny Crawford was once my pupil, Mr. Templer. Oh, he had a magnificent technical grasp of classical music, but no artistic soul. He was a great disappointment to me. Nevertheless, I do not wish to see Johnny Crawford dead. That is why I have come to you. Well, now, that's a rather macabre attached to an otherwise light-hearted evening. Murder is always macabre, Mr. Templer. So it's to be death by violence. Then. It is, and I shall tell you a great deal more about it at my home tomorrow morning, Mr. Templer. 637 Reseda Drive. I'm certain that you will be kind enough to be there. Well, that's the kind of certainty that causes horse players to go broke, Mr. Opto. Then let us say I'm playing a long shot. And I'm betting that among the saints and sinners present here... You are numbered among the former. Hmm. Uh, one question. Yes? Could you give me any idea as to why someone should desire to remove the aforesaid Johnny Crawford from the ranks of the living? Oh, I can do better than that, Mr. Templer. I can give you the name of the person who will be responsible. Oh, and that person? A musical composer who has been dead for over a hundred years. Ludwig van Beethoven. <laughs> Should I say thank you or slap your face? What do you think? The slaps have it. Uh, what could I do for you? Mm, you must be kidding. Uh, 
And if you're here to see Mr. Opdahl, you must be Simon Templer. Guilty. And you? Uh, Mickey Clark, Mr. Opdahl's secretary. Mickey Clark. Well. <laughs> uh, won't you lope in, Mr. Templer? Oh, thanks. I could hardly refuse such an enthusiastic invitation. <laughs> Well, well, Rachmaninoff prelude in C sharp. Is that the maestro playing? It's not Jimmy Durante. Oh. The music room's at the far end of the foyer. Mr. Opdahl's expecting you. Come with me. Oh, thanks. I'll take advantage. Oh, no. Those are shots. Identification acknowledged. Come on, let's go. Oh, what's, what's happened in there? Just what? stay behind me and let me find out first. Mr. Templer. That was no prelude in C sharp being played in here, Mickey. It was a prelude to murder. To murder? Where do those French doors lead to? Why, uh, to the terrace. Why? Uh, see if it isn't too late to help Mr. Opto while I... Oh, no! Well, it's nasty weather out anyway. But uh, aren't you going after him? Uh, my halo wouldn't look too well on top of a shroud. Where's the nearest telephone? Uh, telephone? Yeah, I know this comes as a great surprise, Mickey, but the police are rather fussy about these things. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, the, the telephone's right up... Oh. Up dog. He's not dead. He's trying to play something. He's trying Take it easy, Mickey. Take it easy. Up dog. Up dog, it's Simon Templer. Who shot you? Do you know who shot you? <laughs> Can't talk, but he's trying to play. Abdo, Abdo, can you hear me? It's Templer. Who shot you, man? Who shot? <gasps> Mister Templer, is it? He is, Nicky. This time it's for sure. Oh. What was he trying to say as he died? Tell us the name of the murderer. One thing I've learned in this drab, weary life, my dear, is never to second guess a dead man. What's this? Caught under the music rack. It looks like a couple of torn bits of paper. Mm, you thereby win your A for a cumin, Mickey. Oh, I, I recognize that top one, Mr. Templer. It's a personal note paper used by Mr. Opdahl. Huh. Who is uh, Paul? Paul? Mm. Uh, Paul DeGage. He, he's Mr. Opdahl's concert manager. Why? The name Paul is the only written word left on the page. Huh. Look, we might have a slightly better lead on this second bit of parchment. Well, it's part of a music manuscript. Yeah, and an old one, too, judging by the condition of the paper and the signature attached there, too. Ludwig van Beethoven. Beethoven? Mm-hmm, the popular tunesmith who left this mortal coil some hundred years ago. Do you think it's possible that the old boy came back? <laughs> You sure you want to come along with me on this little jaunt, Mickey? Lawrence Updahl was a swell boss and a wonderful guy. If there's anything I can do to help you get the man who killed him, I'm going to do it. And all the time I thought it was my personality that intrigued you. Oh, well, let's hope I'm not as disappointed by Mr. Updahl's concert manager, Paul DeGage. <laughs> I can't believe it, Mr. Templer. Lord, it's up though, dead. Murdered. Uh, why would anyone want to murder an Lord Opto? Uh, that was going to be my question, Mr. DeGage. You don't suppose it was because he was going to tell me who wanted to murder Johnny Crawford, do you? Johnny Crawford? Yeah. Who, who, who is he? No, no. You obviously don't suppose. Any other suggestions? Well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Templer, but I'm so stunned by this news, I... Lawrence was going to play for me this very evening, and, and I wasn't now... aware that Mr. Opdahl had a concert date for this evening, Mr. DeGay. Uh, it, it wasn't a concert engagement, Miss Clark. By a stroke of good fortune, I'd, I'd come into possession of an original musical manuscript of Beethoven's. Piano, sonata, and Lawrence was... Did you say Beethoven? Yes. It's, it's an original that's never been published. Uh, it was known to exist, but was lost in route to the publishers in 1824, and... It never turned up again until just recently. Why, well, it must be worth a fortune, Mr. DeGage. Well, it is quite valuable, yes. I'm going to offer it for sale to a small group of collectors in Coronado this evening. Lawrence had agreed to play it for me. But you now... wouldn't happen to have this manuscript here, would you? Well, yes. Yes, it, it's in my safe. Do you mind if we take a look at it? Well, of course not. I'll, I'll have it for you in just a moment. Thanks. It's a remarkable document. Seems to be no question as to it. Authenticity. And that always helps. How did you happen to get hold of it? 
A refugee from Vienna brought it to this country some years ago. Just discovered it among some old family possessions he'd brought along with him. Doesn't know how it got there. I'm selling it for him. There you are. Please handle it carefully, Mr. Tendler. It's quite old and fragile. It would probably tear quite easily. That wouldn't be an apology for the fact that it's torn right now, would it? Torn? Why, I... I'm not certain I understand. The missing signature should supply the missing meaning. Missing signature? You mean that... Oh, good heavens. Uh, oh. Well, you really had me worried for a moment, Mr. Templer. But as you can see, this manuscript is in perfect condition. There's the original signature. Ludwig and Beethoven. He's right, Simon. What about that torn piece? Exactly what I was going to say, Mickey. Thanks for your trouble, Mr. DeGage. Sorry I bothered you. It's not a question of bothering me, Mr. Templer. I'm I'm merely puzzled. I don't understand what a Beethoven manuscript might have to do with the murder of Lord Uptal. And that's the reason I'm sorry I bothered you, Mr. DeGage. Now, neither have I. <laughs> Police are gone. I don't think I could have returned here. Mr. dropped all this time. I'm not too happy about homicidal surroundings myself, Mickey. Well, then why come back at all? I find myself with an ungovernable impulse to indulge in musical composition, and I... More of that later, Mickey. It would appear we have an unexpected eavesdropper amongst us. An unexpected... Mm-hmm. Oh! Oh, don't stop now, Sam. If you don't mind, I'd just assume the farther away I am from lethal weapons, the better I like it. Uh, that is a gun in his hand, isn't it, Simon? The genus automatic pistol, species caliber 45. That's very scientific, chum. <laughs> well, you better hand over that paper. Paper? Don't play coy, chum. The paper you took him off to all's music with. Oh, that? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm saving autographs. Never had one of Beethoven's before, I... Yeah, I'll bet you never had your tummy blasted by a forty-five slug before, either. Two, two, two. I think I'd better take that gun. Oh, no, you don't, Better chum. give it to me. All right, chum, I will. Simon! Oh, you... You killed him. Shut you... up, shut up. He's dead. You killed him. You... You, oh. you said he shut up, didn't I? I'll stand back when I look at that paper. Oh. She'll be somewhere in his... Yeah. yeah. Inside pocket, huh? Thanks, chum. Pretty brave with a gun, aren't you? Yeah. Better retire from the music business, sister. From where I sit, it don't look too healthy. So long, baby. Simon. Simon, please answer me. Uh, Are you all right, Simon? Answer me, please. Uh, I must speak to my barber about this. Simon. And somehow the padding and massage I get after a shave doesn't give me anything like the sensation I'm getting now. Simon, you're, you're all right. You... Well, I will be when the boys operating the trip hammers on my skull knock off at five o'clock. Why didn't you let me know? Why did you lie there playing possum like that? I doubt that a possum would appreciate the lovely picture you made as you bent over me, but oh. as for me, well, I was in no hurry to wake up. <laughs> uh, uh, what happened to Chum? He departed with your prize autograph after creasing your skull with a bullet and threatening me with the same. A lovable soul, isn't he? Mm. My only consolation is that his aim is far worse than even his intentions. Simon, for Pete's sake, come across. So far, I don't understand a thing. Which puts us both in the same boat. And speaking of boats, come along, Mickey. We've got an appointment with one. Oh, how nice. Any particular kind? Oh, yeah, a very particular kind. A ferry boat that's going to take us across the Bay to Coronado. boat is like a ghost ship. Oh, now, don't tell me that a little fog is getting you down, Mickey. Ah, little fog. It's so thick we can't even see the rail from here. Why are you so insistent on getting over to Coronado tonight? Paul DeGage is selling a Beethoven manuscript to a bunch of collectors there, remember? One of my more famous hunches tells me that among those present should be a guy for whom capital punishment was invented. I hope it's better than the two hunches you had on that torn manuscript. It has to be. What is it, son? That piano in the lounge. Do you hear it? Yes. Uh, rather good. It should be. The pianist is a former pupil of Lawrence Opdahl's, now holding forth at a dingy dive called the Birdcage. The Birdcage? Simon! 
you, you, you mean Johnny Crawford? Well, if it isn't, he should sue for plagiarism. That's his personal theme song. Johnny Crawford aboard this ferry boat. Now, why would he be going to Coronado? That's a good question, Mickey. Suppose we ask Johnny for the answer, huh? <laughs> Door to the lounge should be somewhere over here. Maybe it is, but it looks like you'll have to navigate by radar to find it. Uh-uh. Somebody's coming out on deck now. All we have to do is find right, that. Right. Come down. Everything's going to be okay. I hope you're right, Jensen. I've got the creeps for fair. Yes. Never mind it. I, have... I know I'm right. Just voice. don't get excited. We got the signature, didn't we? Who's going to know the difference now? I know it, Jensen. Maybe someone else does, too. Oh, forget it, Johnny, will you? I'll meet you at the birdcage when it's all over. <laughs> the birdcage. Johnny Crawford at the birdcage. What are you kicking about? It's a living, isn't it? Oh, sure. Pretty soon we'll all be in a heavy sugar. Now, just you wait. Oh, you better be right up. They're gone, son. Hidden in the fog. Who were they? Didn't you recognize one of the voices? Oh, I... It was the friendly one who tried to part my hair with a forty-five. What was it all about? That's the second question I have to ask Crawford. You wait here, Mickey. I'll be right back. Uh, Simon, you can't. Jensen's got a gun. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll be seeing you. Uh, uh, Simon, I can't stay here alone. I- I'm allergic to fog. Oh, you crazy fool. I, c- I can't even see you. Oh. Simon. Simon, what was that? What happened? Simon. Oh, no. Simon. No, I'm... Who was that? Damp, and my head aches. I've swallowed liberal quantities of seawater, which I found much too salty, and I have a terrific yen to play the piano. To play the... Oh, no, not again. Mickey, my dear, any psychiatrist will warn you of the dangers of inhibiting a creative urge. I think I'd better get into that lounge and get this one out of my system. a grave mistake, Mickey, by not paying attention to music lessons. Now, if I'd only listened to Professor Heinrich Wurzel, I... If you'd only listened to me, Jensen or Crawford, or whoever it was, wouldn't have hit you on the head. And you'd be rational now, rather than non compassmented Oh, you shouldn't speak so harshly of whoever it was, Mickey. When he tossed me into the briny, for some reason I thought of music, piano music. And I think I've got something. If I could only find the right combination... <laughs> Try to find that psychiatrist you mentioned earlier. More attention to your noodle and less to noodling might result in getting... Mickey, you've jumped to a big, fat, and incorrect conclusion. Listen to this. It's hardly what I'd call a musical tour de force. Mickey, you're not listening. I'll give you one more chance. There. Sound familiar to you? Not in the least. But then I didn't take lessons from Professor Heinrich Wurzel, which might account for my... Wait a minute. Th- th- that phrase. I- isn't that what Lawrence Optall played just before he died? You see, you should have studied under Professor Wurzel. Oh. He would have given you a hundred in musical identification. No, you're not trying to tell me that th- that little musical phrase means something, Simon. Now, let's see now. We'll be in Coronado at six. That should give me about two hours to prove its meaning to you. Uh, Sounds like a rather complicated procedure. Oh, the procedure itself will be simple, but first I have to clutter it up with a call to Lieutenant Flanagan and a a little visit to the public library. I can only... Say, Simon, that I trust the past hour and a half in that library was more entertaining for you than it was for me. Oh, it was, Mickey, it was. You'd be surprised at the amount of interesting information one can garner in a library. Maybe I wouldn't be so surprised if you'd share some of it with me. Well, I learned the very interesting tidbit that Ludwig von Beethoven lived from 1770 to 1827. 
Mm-hmm. That he wrote nine symphonies. Amazing. That he had a sketchbook containing a mass in C sharp, a piano sonata, a fugue on Bach, and... Uh, uh, oh, Simon, please. If that's all you can tell me, about an hour and a half of wasted time... Well, you can... not quite. I could mention the fact that one of the more incorrect books on Beethoven was written by a John Maysfield Crawford. Well, what difference does it make? Who wrote the... Uh, hmm? J- John Maysfield Crawford? Mm-hmm. Could that be our Johnny Crawford, by any chance? Could be. An authority on Beethoven? A poor one, but an authority. So what? So this. We're going to make a bid on a Beethoven manuscript, and don't be too surprised if we win it. And a murderer as well. Here's Paul DeGage up on the rock. Looks as though the bidding's about to begin. You couldn't ask for better timing from a metronome. All right, gentlemen. Yeah. Quiet, please. Quiet. This was to be a very happy occasion, gentlemen, as you all know. But we were to present here tonight an original, authentic, and hitherto unknown manuscript of a piano sonata by Beethoven. Mm-hmm. In honor of the occasion, I prevailed upon my dear friend, Laurette Hopsel, to be the first to play the sonata. Unfortunately, as most of you now know, he has met with a tragic end. In deference to Laurette's memory, I have not sought another pianist to substitute for him. I am certain you all share my feelings. And so... I'd be we... very happy to play the sonata for you, Mr. DeGage. Simon, are you crazy? I... I'm not certain I quite understand the meaning of this interruption, Mr. Temple. Oh, I wouldn't let that bother me, Mr. DeGage. <laughs> now, as soon as I reach that piano... Uh-huh. There. Well... Really, Mr. Templer, I... Oh, it's I... quite simple, Mr. DeGage. I'm going to substitute for Laurette Optor. You? Why, I, I didn't know that you were a pianist, Mr. Templer. Oh, sure. One of the best. Listen to this. <laughs> Mr. Templer! Mr. Templer! There can only be two explanations for this. This outrageous action on your part. You're either drunk or mad. I shall have to ask you to leave this hall at once. Now, surely, Mr. DeGage, you wouldn't want me to leave so soon, not before I've told these gentlemen that Beethoven never wrote the music on that manuscript you have for sale. Beethoven never wrote That manuscript is a fake. No such piano sonata was ever written by Beethoven or lost on its way to the publisher. This is preposterous. The record of that sonata is in Beethoven's own sketchbook. Oh, I'll admit that a piano sonata is noted in the sketchbook, yes. But if the person who forged this manuscript had looked far enough, he'd have learned that the original was written for four hands as a duet, not for two. Well, I, I can't believe it. This manuscript is a forgery, written by a former so-called expert named Johnny Crawford. But if this is so, if it... Do you have any proof, Mr. Templer? Lawrence Opdahl's death is proof enough. He discovered the forgery... But then he made a grave mistake. He thought Crawford's life would be in danger to prevent the knowledge from coming out. But it was his own life that was taken. Then, then it was Crawford who killed him? Optil told me who killed him, Mr. DeGage. Optil? Hmm, he couldn't talk, but he could play. And he played six notes. These notes. Those notes spell the name of the murderer. A name that will be verified by his accomplices when they're picked up by the police. And for the edification of those who never studied under Professor Heinrich Wurzel, the notes... You'll never hang this on me, Templar. Now, Simon, he's got a gun. Well, then I'd better... Well, leave him, I'll kill you for this, Templar. I'll kill you. Oh, that's such a revolting oh, thought to gain. Yeah. I'd better not risk this the feet. Possibility. Uh, 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 now, uh, what was that you were saying, Mr. DeGage? Simon, he can't say anything. He's Come to think of it, so he is. And look at the time, just 8 o'clock. I told you you'd have your answer in two hours, didn't I? Then the whole idea was the gauges from the start. And Johnny Crawford and Jensen were working for him. Mickey... Why don't you stop your intellect from taking over for your emotions? Simon. Uh, then Crawford uh, must have forged the manuscript. He was a good enough pianist and a semi-authority on Beethoven to do it. But how did Mr. Opdahl come into it? You know, they say that boat rides are wonderful therapy in cases of uh, inhibited romance. Uh, of course. Uh, Crawford was his pupil. I'll bet he got cold feet and showed Mr. Opdahl a copy of the manuscript. And Mr. DeGage got wind of it, killed Mr. Opdahl, and made off of the copy. 
Oh, only part of it was torn off of the music rack. Oh, and this blasted fog. It makes everything so warm and cozy. But it must have been the idea of a second manuscript that tipped you off, huh? Uh, particularly when Jensen was so anxious to get the torn uh, signature. I wonder if you'd still feel like slapping my face. And, um, of course, I finally got what you meant about those six notes Mr. Opdahl played. They were de-gage, spelling de-gage. <laughs> yes. Mickey, when are you going to stop being logical? Oh, son. Right now. You have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the four horsemen is still riding across Europe scarring the bodies and spirits of millions with brutal hooves. His name is Hunger, and his victims are legion. Their cries for help are sounding right outside our door. Despite increased supplies of certain foods and improved crop conditions, Europe's need for more food is urgent and immediate. Americans can help now by sending food packages to Europe's hungry ones through the auspices of CARE, a non-profit humanitarian organization. CARE, spelled C-A-R-E, stands for Cooperative for American Remittances to Europe. It is composed of the country's 26 top welfare agencies, all operating to drive the specter of hunger from Europe. You can aid in this work by sending a $10 remittance to CARE, New York. A 21-and-a-half-pound food package will then be sent to any designated person in 15 countries. Or if you wish, CARE will select a recipient. Smaller food packages are available for lesser amounts. The address again is CARE, New York. Remember, they still need CARE. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Sidney Marshall. Our cast included Alice Frost, Fritz Feld, Ted Osborne, Tony Barrett, and George Neese. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen in the Universal International picture Curtain Call at Cactus Creek. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Doug Gourlay. Monday night brings you two great adventure mystery programs side by side on most NBC stations. You'll hear Nightbeat and then Top Secret. Lovely Alona Massey stars in Top Secret, the story of espionage during the last war. Be sure to tune here tomorrow night for Nightbeat and Top Secret. Next, Sam Spade, then Summer Symphony on NBC. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of The Saint. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with the brilliant Tony Hancock with Hancock's Half Hour. That's going to be going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at tourdate.co.uk and I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. As I mentioned earlier, I do have a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you get a chance to check it out, please do. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.